Well, praise the Lord and welcome back to Defining Moments this morning. You know, we just can't hardly wait from one Sunday to the next to hear what the Lord has to say to us. And I know there's a lot of good preaching during the week and we can turn the TV on and we can hear it. But, you know, I just I know what's in this ministry and I know what it's been birthed out of. And it just excites me each Sunday morning to turn my radio on at 830. And sometimes I have to fight with that radio, make it pick that station up just right and get it clear. But I'm if you could see me, I'm kind of holding up the radio, moving it around, working the antenna and trying to get it because I live quite away from where this uh, program's aired from. But I just thank the Lord that I've been able to hear it and that you have been able to hear it and are hearing it today. And this morning, it is my honor and privilege to have my sister in the Lord with us today. Her name is Sanja Allen and Sanja is has stolen my heart i tell you we have uh not known each other but for a few months but she is just you know there are those people that you meet and you just feel like you've known them all your life well sanja is one of those people and i tell you what i trust what god is doing in her life and you can know and see the hand of the lord upon her life and she's going to come today and and share a word with you that i know is going to minister into your spirit so this morning you just allow the holy spirit to speak to you through Sanja this morning. Sanja, welcome to Defining Moments this morning. Well, thank you, Lynn, so much. It's um, been an honor to just be invited to be on the show here this morning. I tell you, um, we've been planning this for quite some time now, and it looks like every time we thought we were going to get on the show, something would happen. And behold it, it wouldn't happen. And I knew that God was going to make a way and it was going to come through and, and we were going to be here. And when you know it had to be snow in Greenville, Alabama on the ground with ice and we still made it. Praise the Lord this morning. We still made it. Um, I, I'd just like to enter into a prayer with you right now. Um, right now, Father God, we just lift you up, Lord God, and we just honor you, Lord, for just being God all by yourself. We honor you, Lord God, and we praise you for the humbling of the body, Lord God, that your word may come forth and manifest whole, and that some hearts, some bondage, someone will be set free this morning, Lord God, from the sound of my voice and the working of the Holy Ghost that is all about you, Lord Jesus. And we're going to move on in the name of Jesus. Jesus right now and this morning I, I you know I wrestle with um, what I would say and I've known for months that I was going to be here and um, for months I've been saying well Lord I'm going I'm going to come from here if you'd allow me and Lord give me a word I'm going to come from here if you allow me and it just didn't work that way I, I tried hard to get around um, where I'm coming from this morning. Um, it is truly a word from God. It is truly from God. Um, and in this word this morning, I'm going to share my testimony. It won't be right at the moment, but I'd like for you, if you would, um, just take your mind and your hearts. And we're going to go to Jeremiah 29 and 11. And I know that that's something that um, is so common. You know, some verses that everybody knows and they use in context or out of context one way or the other in their lives uh, to make things convenient for what we do in our lives and um, Jeremiah 29 and 11 um, and, and let's read that and I'm coming from the New International Version of this and, and it says for I know the plans I have for you declares the Lord plans for welfare and not for evil to give you a future and a hope then you will call upon me and come and pray to me and I will hear you you will seek me and find me when you seek me with all of your heart. All of your heart. I will be found by you, declares the Lord, and I will bring you back from captivity. I will gather you up from all the nations and places where I have banished you, declares the Lord, and will bring you back to the place from which I carried you into exile. Now, when we look at that, if, if I had to take a topic or if I had to put a word to that, it would be, I trust your plans, God. I trust your plans, God. You know, when we, when we initially use that, and I'm guilty of this, I don't know how many of you are, um, but I'm guilty of, um, I say, well, anything happens in my life that is adverse to what I think it should be or things go on in my family or things go on in other people's lives. I was pretty guilty of saying, but you know, God has a plan for you. 
God has a, he declares that plan for welfare and not evil. He's going to give you a future and a hope. Boy, that was just one of those things that you throw out there for any relationship, anything that happens. But it's very easy when thinking about God's plan for our lives to have the attitude, it's all about me. It's all about me. Yes, it's true. God cares about us. Every intricate detail in our lives, he, he truly cares about our lives. In fact, Jesus said even the hairs on our heads are numbered. He cares. We can also mistakenly think that God's plan is always going to be to feel good plan. Um, the plan that is intent to make us happy. Um, it's all about, um, he, it's all about, well, Lord, you said you had that plan. I can remember applying for a job and I just knew, I said, well, Lord, you have a plan for my life. I'd gotten my degree, but you have a plan for my life. So I'm going to apply for this job and I'm going to, I know you want me to have a hope and I know you have a future for me and you know the plans you have for me. Well, every time I apply for that job and apply for a job and, and, and go back and find out, well, did I get it or um, what is your reply or what's the answer? And when the answer was no, my, 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 downtrodden. Isn't that the way we feel? The answer was no. He said, but God, you said you had a plan. And, and it was to give me a hope and a future. Well, in fact, that is exactly what he has for your plan. His plan, not ours. His plan is what he has for us. And I'd like to go into a little detail here about Jeremiah 29. Before you can understand Jeremiah 29, we first need to understand where the people were. These people were, the children of Israel were in Babylon. They were captives to the Babylonians. They had been exiled there for disobedience and a disregard for the law that God had given them. They were there because they had refused to live according to the words and the warning that God had sent them. Jeremiah was the prophet that came along. Jeremiah was thought to be an humble man, a quiet man, and sometimes very shy and alone. Uh, Jeremiah came up against Hananiah, who gave the children of Israel who were in captivity at that time a word that God was going to deliver them in two years' time out of captivity. Jeremiah stood strong as a prophet and alone to let the children of Israel know at this time, yes, you will be delivered. I am there with you but it will not be in two years' time. You will have to suffer your 70 years in captivity. Why were they in captivity? Because of their disobedience. Isn't it so often we wonder, why are we in our Babylon? Why are we suffering, Lord? What about your plan for my life? And we have to think about God's will and think about the judgment that comes against us for disobedience and breaking his laws, breaking his law of adultery, breaking his law of homosexuality, breaking his law of sexual pornography, breaking his law of mean-spiritedness. Let's move from that to our inner being, breaking his law of selfishness. It's all about me. It's all about me. Instead of living up to the rules and the laws that God would have for us, the things that he said that he would grant unto us, yes, he will deliver you from Babylon. But yet we have to and must go through that judgment. The wonderful thing about Jeremiah 29 is that you know he tells you that he knows the plans he has for you. Now you think about in Babylon when the children of Israel were there in captivity, can you imagine someone coming and giving them a message when they have starved? Their temple has been destroyed. They have no homes. They have no place to call their own. Their children are hungry. Their children have died. Their husbands have died. Their wives have died. They're in a strange land, a dry land, a dry place. Can you imagine someone coming and saying, I have a plan for you. I am going to deliver you. I know the plans I have for you. It's to give you a hope 
and to give you a future. Can you imagine your Babylon and someone coming to you telling you that this Lord says that he has all of this for you. He is going to deliver you, but it'll be 70 years before you come out. Can I trust that plan that that God has for me? Can I trust that that plan is going to be to move forward the gospel of Jesus Christ and to preach what he has done for me, to witness to others what God has done to me in that season? That hope that they needed was just what Jeremiah was giving them and letting them know, God, I have a, he has a hope for you and a future even where you are. Wherever your Babylon is, wherever your captivity is, I stopped by today to tell you that God has a hope and a future for you. And it's for good, not evil. And it is to prosper you, and it will. How do I know? He said, now, lady, I hear what you're saying, and, and all of that sounds good, but now, how do you know this? Well, let me tell you a little bit about my Babylon. It was not so many years ago. When I say not so many years ago, I mean like uh, maybe five. I'll give it five years. I was addicted to drugs. An addiction that had consumed my life had become second. I'll make that first nature. Now you're talking about a girl who grew up in a Baptist home. Went to church every Sunday, Sunday school, taught Sunday school, went to Bible study. Uh, one of the uh, uh, beauty, beauty queen, majorette, um, honor roll student, had every opportunity in the world, college, to go to college and do all these great things. And how in the world could you be caught in Babylon? <clears throat> I tell you, the truth about that is it could happen to any of us. When we are disobedient and when we are so full of ourselves that God can do nothing with us, sometimes it's necessary to go to Babylon in order to look up and see God. You see that pride, so full of pride and self. And, and there were some things that happened in my life um, that may have been contributory to my getting to my Babylon. But let me tell you, I was responsible for the hatred. I was responsible for the bitterness. I was responsible for not loving, not giving of myself to mankind, to my family, to myself. I held on to all of the hurt, church hurt, family hurt, job hurt. All the hurts that were inside of me were beginning to create my Babylon my disobedience, my Babylon, my discouragement, my spirit so low that drugs was the only thing that gave me satisfaction. Jeremiah was talking about that very thing, even going into the temple. You read in chapter 7 and 1 where God had given Jeremiah word for the people to stand in front of the temple and let the people know that praising and going into the temple and in those walls and putting on a show of right living instead of living right without repentance would cause that temple to be destroyed and them to be delivered into captivity. That right living and not living right is what I was so guilty of. Those things and all those things that I harbored in my heart and held in my body caused me to look to a source outside of what God had for me. I knew the laws. I knew the rules. I was raised in the church. Did I know God and have a personal relationship? Nothing like I'd have after that addiction, after my Babylon, after going into my Babylon, that addiction. I remember one night sitting in a motel room prior to my deliverance. It was that day. The same deliverance that God is talking about for the Israelites, for the children of Israel out of Babylon. I was there and I, I began to set my table up to prepare myself to partake into what it is you do when you are addicted to drugs. Don't act like you're shocked. Some of you are on them right now. 
some of you have been dibbling and dabbling in the practice of uh, prescription drugs. Well, it's legal because it's, there's a prescription for it. Honey, that's from the devil. It is from the devil. It's called formakai, and it's from the devil, not from God. And I tell you right now, there's a deliverance. That's your Babylon, but you coming out today. You're going to come out today. I sat there and I waited and, and I sat there and said, well, I'm, I'm going to I had everything I needed laying out there beside me. And I just had the, heard the Holy Spirit tell me exactly what it was. Tell you what it is. It was cocaine and marijuana. And, and, and they did a thing, a practice here where you take that marijuana and that cocaine and you lace a cigar, um, with it and, and, and you smoke it. And, and, and this was that euphoric high, anything that could cancel the pain or anything that would help me to escape my Babylon. And God knows it wasn't going anywhere without God, anything that could help me escape that pain and that bitterness that I had inside. Anything that could help me um, escape the, 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 the sexual um, promiscuousness and all the things that I did that I knew was against God and God's word. I sat there and I waited and I watched TV there and I sat there and setting myself up just to have an awesome time. And I could hear the Lord say to me, don't you remember why I created you? Don't you remember why I created you? Well, I wrestled with that for a moment because I looked over at my, my little stash and I knew I wasn't, I knew that I, I, I hadn't had anything, Lord. I said, well, I haven't smoked anything, so I'm not high. So you mean to tell me that I'm hearing the voice of the Lord and I'm not high? You see, you, 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 you fall into this false prophecy of God does not hear you. God will not speak to you. God won't give you an impossible thing to do. I guess that's why he told a lame man to walk. He will give you the impossible and he will make it possible for you to get through. So I listened to God and I said, well, Lord, I know I looked over and I began to set myself up and open my cigar and put my little marijuana in and weed. And God said, did you hear me? Don't you remember why I created you? Again, I looked around. I didn't see anyone. And I said, well, Lord, now is this God or who is this talking to me? Immediately with the flash of a light, it seemed I was on my knees. I could see my life rolling in front of me and to be more direct I saw myself coming down the birth canal my life began to roll like an old Polaroid picture if you've ever been to the to movies um maybe back in the early 70s when you're sitting in a drive-thru and you're watching everything on the on the big screen and you're sitting in your car that's how my life was rolling I saw every hurt that had been done to me every hurt I had caused anyone else I saw the pain that I couldn't face in my sober mind. I saw the pain I had caused my family, my children. But more than that, I saw the pain of God's heart. As he ministered to me, the pain that was in his heart, because I had been created in his image. I had been formed for him that I might proclaim and praise him. I saw that God had a plan for my life and it was not my plans, not my plans. And that it was not all about me. It was not all about me. See, I know when you pick up that drink or when you pick up that drug or when you participate in promiscuity, That unforgiveness that you have in your heart, that hatred that you have for your parent, that desire to be more than what you are is what consumes you the most. And when you determine that it is God's plan that I will live by, the plan that he has for my life, my Babylon is not my end. 
It is just the beginning. As I picked myself up, I was sobbing. From that day to this day, I have never touched another drug. Not another drug. Because then in that moment, I understood and accepted the responsibility of my actions. The responsibility of God's love. And I could not hurt his heart like that anymore. His plan for me may not have been mine. But I know that it was the best plan for me. And that plan for eternal life, that love of Jesus Christ dying on the cross and his resurrection was for me. And my life was to glorify him and to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. And you're saying to yourself, oh yeah, but he was calling you to preach. Wait a minute, honey. Don't even get on that cop out. You are his child. You belong to him. He says, but you are a chosen people. First Peter 2 and 9. Royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's special possession, that you may declare the praises of him who are called you of, he called you out of darkness into a wonderful life. That wasn't just for me. Put your name there. Put your name in that scripture. But whatever your name is, Regina, Cynthia, Harold, Daniel, whoever, whatever your name is, put your name there. He is speaking to you right now. He's speaking to someone's heart right now. He's breaking that yoke of addiction. He's breaking that yoke of, I hear an abused woman. You don't have to stay there. You don't have to accept that. God has a plan for you. And it's not your plan, it's his. Trust God's plan for you. The children of Israel had to trust God's plan. In a time in their life when they were in captivity, in bondage, had nothing, had no home, had no place to go. And they had to trust this God that they could not see. They could not fathom where their next meal would come from. But they trusted God's plan for their life. Jeremiah encouraged them, trust God. He will bring you out of captivity. It may not happen tomorrow. And it may not happen in two weeks, but if you trust God, I declare to you that he will bring you out of captivity, of sin, the captivity of dying and decaying in your life, dying to your, just dying over the things, withering away over the things that the world has dealt to you. Forgive them. Forgive yourself. Allow God to use you and minister to you with the love that he has for you. His grace is abundant. He wants to love you and he wants to deliver you. And he will. He will deliver you just as he did the Israel, the children of Israel in Babylon. What is your Babylon today? Where is your Babylon today? It may be your job. Your Babylon may be in your family. Your Babylon may not necessarily be something tangible you can touch. Your Babylon may be unforgiveness, hatred, bitterness, prejudice. Your Babylon may be that thing that the eye cannot see. God will deliver you from that. His plan will work in your life. Jesus came for that purpose so that you, he died on a cross, was del- was risen on the third day and sits on the right hand of the father so that we can sit in heavenly places with him. I don't care where you are, what you've done, who you are, how bad you think it is. It doesn't get bad enough for God. It doesn't get so big for him. Don't limit him. Take the chains off. Take the limitations off because he's a mighty big God. And I promise you he's bigger than your, bigger than your problem. His purpose for your life. Is bigger than your problem. The love he has for you is bigger than your Babylon. That captivity that you're in is bigger than your Babylon. God's word will minister to you. I challenge you today to turn to God right now and just say, Lord, I accept the plan that you have for my life. In accepting that plan, I forgive all hurt, 
harm that I've done to anyone, Lord God, or anything or any situation that I've been in. My captivity right now, God, is yours. You will deliver me, Lord God. If it's not today or tomorrow, Lord God, I'm going to stay right here and trust your plan. I'm going to trust what you have for my life. I'll no longer walk this way and disregard who you are and what you are, and what you created me to be. I remember, I remember, Lord, you created me in your image. Your image, Lord God. The attitude, the gratitude. You created me in your image, the giving, the loving. In your image, Lord God. The attributes that you have is what I am. I accept that, and I accept your plan. I accept your plan. Accept God today. Accept the Lord Jesus Christ today in your heart. He's waiting and he's listening. And he will not forsake you. Defining moments in our lives. That was a defining moment in my life. I'll never be the same. Praise God. Hallelujah. Mm. Praise God. That's some good stuff. Praise God. That's some good stuff, sister. Glory to God. I'm telling you, take these words you've heard today. <clears throat> let them change your life. Because I'm going to tell you, they're not just words. They're, they're spirit and they're life. I was sitting one morning early at my dining room table and I had a, a lamp lit. And I was sitting there to study and it was before daylight. And as I was sitting there, I saw you I was getting ready to read. My Bible was closed and I looked down at it to get ready to open it. And I thought it was breathing. Amen. It was like I could see the 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 cover rise and fall. Praise God. Rise Amen. I shook my head. I thought, whoa, this candle, you know, this lamp's playing tricks with my eyes. I looked back and it was doing it again. And I, I said, Lord, breathing this word, this Bible looks like it's alive. And he spoke to me just as clear as a bell. He said, it is. It is alive Amen. and it is quick yes, and powerful, yes, sharper than a two-edged sword. sword. Man, it will cut down to the very thoughts and not just the thought, but the reason you were thinking it, the intention behind it. So take this word and let it change your life. Let me hear from you. Contact me at Ministries at AOL.com. You want Sanja to pray with you or any of these other ladies to talk with you, counsel you, tell you more about how they were delivered. I know they will be happy to talk to you and pray with you and help counsel you through uh, what you're going through. We don't want you just to hear this program and then you just be cast out on your own. We want to connect with you and help discipline and disciple you in the way that you should go and the way the Word wants you to walk. So you just... Connect with us and take these words. Thank you, Sonja. Amen. Thank you so much for sharing these wonderful words and your defining moment with us today. And I'm telling you, I know with all my heart that when you realized how much Jesus loved you, it changed your life Amen. and was your greatest defining moment. Yes, it was. So you remember that too. Glory to God. That when you realize just how much he loves you and his name is Jesus, then you will experience your greatest defining moment too. God bless you.